Let's learn about macro. 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 Welcome to DSLR Nerd. I am your host Damien and today we're going to be talking about macro lenses. We've got a different assortment of lenses. What I don't have with me today, um, what I swear that I still own but I cannot find, are some macro filters. Now that's the one of the cheapest ways into uh, macro is to get a 1x, 2x, 4x, and 10x um, macro filter that uh, either individually screws on the end of your lens or can be combined together for an increased effect. Um, this is what they look like right there. You can see that, hopefully. $12.49 on Amazon um, is one of the ways to start into macro photography. However, it's not the best way to do it because you have to buy these to fit the particular lens you're going to screw them onto, so you have to get the right millimeter. The other cheaper and probably better way to go is to pick up a set of macro extension tubes. Uh, I think this is the Photo Diox. Um, one for Nikon and there's one for Canon. So they have a Nikon or a Canon mount on them. The Photodiax Canon EOS macro extension tube set kit for extreme $11.95. So about the same price as those um, macro filters that you attach to the... So as you can see those don't have um, any glass in them at all. Uh, no de degradation of de degradation. No degradation of image quality. Um, there's no element in them at all. And what's good about that is you get a very similar effect um, as using the filters. Uh, but it basically it moves the lens away from your camera and makes any lens into a macro lens. Now with both of these cheap solutions, you will have a decent loss of light. I'm using a 50 millimeter 1.4. Um, you can use a longer lens, like a 100 millimeter, uh, and it will then get you closer to your subject. A 100 millimeter macro lens is better than the 60 millimeter macro lens, uh, which is better than anything that has macro below that. Like I had that 24 millimeter. FD lens that I did in a, another video, that had a bit of a macro setting. Not really the same. Some lenses, some of your lenses out there will say that they have a macro feature to them. It's not really true macro. It gets you, uh, allows you to get relatively close to your um, subject versus necessarily blowing them up large in frame. Um, so, the two cheap ways into this, as I said, uh, either using the macro filters in one at a time or in combination. The tubes are better because you're putting uh, the you're putting the tubes onto your body of your camera, and then placing the lens on the end of that tube. You can put basically any lens that would fit normally on your camera on the end of this tube. So you only need to buy one set of tubes. You don't have to buy the filters for a few different diameters of lenses. So the first thing I ever did was buy the filters and I bought them for my 18 to 135 lens. Well, I sold that lens and I got the 18 to 200 instead. Well, that has a bigger uh, filter diameter, so I could not use those filters anymore. So here I'll demonstrate how this works. I'm gonna take off my 50 millimeter here and I'm going to pop up, line up the red dots on this little guy here. Make sure I'm not putting hairs into my camera. So I'll line up the red dots and turn that till it clicks. And then I'm going to take my 50 millimeter, again, line up the red dots here and turn that till it clicks. Now, you might have just noticed a little bit of twisting going on. There are different um, pieces to this macro tube. So there's a base and a part where you put your lens on, and then there are uh, a few different um, attachments in here that you can add or take out uh, in order to increase or decrease the amount of macro. So now that I've put this on, I can put any lens at the end of this. It doesn't matter what the diameter of the uh, filter at the end of the lens is with this type of setup. 
So this is the third option for macro. This is a actual macro lens made for macro. Uh, this is the Canon 100 millimeter macro f2.8. Um, f2.8 is a good um, f-stop to let in a decent amount of light. You're not losing light either when you use this like with the, um, the filters and the extension tube. You need to have, with the filters and the extension tube, you need to have a decent amount of light. Um, either be outside or if you're working indoors, you probably want to check out some uh, ring flashes or ring lights um, uh, or um, attachments for macro that have a, a flash on right on either side of the lens. Um, because you want to uh, uh, generate a nice bit of light for your subject that's going to be pretty close. Now this retails for $549 and uh, I got it on eBay for $400. So um, pretty good. I saved $150 by buying it used. It did not come with this, which is a lens hood for it. And... It did not come with this, which is a um, which is a tripod ring. Now I'll show you in a minute why it's a good idea to have a tripod ring uh, for your macro setups. So this is a really nice long hood uh, that goes on to the end of this and uh, blocks out any of that uh, light coming across uh, when you're shooting outside. 100 millimeters I like. There is a 60 millimeter macro lens that Canon makes for the um, APS-C lenses uh, or the crop sensor only. Um, but I decided at the time I had the 60D, uh, which is a crop sensor. But I decided on this 100 millimeter macro because it works. This is an EF lens. The 60 millimeter is an EFS, so the EFS only works on crop. I knew I was going to upgrade to full frame at some point, so. If you think you are, then you might want to just pick up this 100 or... There is a L version of this lens that's image stabilized. That runs $1,049. So there's the 60 macro, so the 60 millimeter 2.8 runs for $469 new. And there's a... See, like, here's a Sigma 70-300 to F4-5.6 to DG macro telephoto. So that, that's a telephoto that includes macro. But, you know, be careful. Some of these lenses don't actually get what the ideal thing in macro is, which is a one-to-one -one magnification. There's a, um, a newer macro ring LED light uh, for $34 for macro. That might be cool. What I love about this macro lens is, as I said, it's a one-to-one -one and it fits on APS-C um, as well as full-frame um, Canons, is that you can focus um, very shallowly on, uh, to a very small subject, and then you can kind of raise it up and take fashion shots with it. Um, 85 millimeter ish is uh, the ideal for portrait photography or fashion photography, but um, you know the the sort of bony kind of features of models get smoothed out and softened when you're at like 85 to 100 millimeters. So um, this does hunt a bit though from time to time. The autofocus um, when I'm when I've shot fashion with this, it sometimes will go out to the end and back of its range. So a lot of times I'll just use uh, manual. I've got a super big uh, focus ring on there. This is a prime lens. And prime lens, as we know, prime lenses are great. So prime lenses are typically better than zooms, although not totally, not always. But a lot of people swear by prime. So this is a prime lens, 100 millimeter. And it's got, you can switch between autofocus and manual. I believe this is USM, so, yep. This is USM, so you don't have to switch to manual focus. Uh, in order to start focusing, you can start turning the ring in um, autofocus mode. And then it has a 0.31 or 0.48 macro switch um, to help focus better when you're up close. All right, so I'm gonna do a little bit of an unboxing real quick. This is a Matro extension tube set DG2 for SLR and DSLR. Um, this uh, came off of eBay, and I think I paid about 40 bucks for it. It has a Canon cap, labeled Canon. Interesting, it's not made by Canon. Um, and this is electronic macro extension tube. So there's two types of macro extension tubes. One's, one type does not have any type of electronic um, connections in order to set the aperture correctly and to um, autofocus. Now, 
macro work you don't always need to autofocus a lot of times you're going to be moving your um, camera back and forth uh, in order to focus but you do need to be able to uh, set the aperture uh, electronically so as I said these are like $12 uh, it's just a hole basically uh, with no connection and then this was about 40 45 on eBay and as you can see it does have uh, connectors on it. So no no electronic connection on the $12 tube uh, but electronic connection on the $40, $45 tube. Now uh, these can get pretty expensive. The one that Canon makes, Canon makes two of these. They don't come together. <laughs> That's Canon. You have to buy these the, the parts of it separately. Canon makes a, uh, a 25 uh, for $150 and they make a 12 which is $130. Isn't that funny? <laughs> so you would then sort of combine the 12 and the, and the 25 to get the most magnification. Now you can use these tubes the idea is you can use these tubes on any kind of type of lens and it will turn into a macro lens. However if you want to get really close you would actually use these extension tubes with a macro lens and that's what the guys that are doing the really super close-ups of bugs are doing. They're using extension tubes or bellows. Uh, you can pick up a bellows that you can kind of change the extension on by uh, turning some knobs with a actual one-to-one -one macro lens. So as I said uh, earlier, you can uh, you have a base here, then you have the lens mount, and then there are two there are two parts that come with this particular, uh, I believe, photodiox. There's a 28 millimeter and a, I was calling them times, wasn't I? You're actually rated as a millimeter. Can you see that, you bastards? Where's both of them? I'm looking right up into my light, so it's kind of hard to see. So there's two pieces anyway. There's two pieces then. Uh, and you can use just one of these, or you can use... Um, both of them. Oh, there's a seven millimeter too. Oh. Yeah. I don't think I'll be able to get it apart though. It's been tightened. So, as you can see, there's a little, I thought there was three, there's a little seven millimeter as well. Where is it? Where is it? See the little seven millimeter on there, but it's kind of tight. I can't get it off, nor shall I. Anyway, so you could just use the seven millimeter and you can put the, the lens mount right on there to get a little bit of macro. Why don't we try that? Let me do some, and then you can put um, the 12 on or the, or the 14 or the 28. You can add all three of them or in combination to get more and more macro. Right, 12 bucks, 14 bucks for that. What I actually like about these is you have a little button to press to, un, to pull these apart. Um, and rather than having to screw them in with a thread, uh, that way they don't over tighten and um, you don't get any kind of turning on them when you put your lens on. What I also like about these, uh, this set that I picked up from eBay is, check that out. Uh, it actually has metal uh, tripod threads um, and I'll explain why you'd need extra tripod threads or a extra tripod ring. Uh, in a minute because when you extend these giant uh, a big lens and a bunch of tubes off the end of your camera um, and your tripod is mounted to the bottom of your camera and you've got this big lens sticking out with a bunch of tubes going to be out here then that's too much weight going forward so you want to change the, um, the, the the mounting point from your camera out into the um, to the actual lens and you've seen that I'm sure on the big telephoto lenses the 70 to 200 or the 300 millimeter, the 600 millimeter, they all have that kind of extra little L-shaped uh, tripod uh, lens ring. So these guys can get expensive um, with, that have the electronic contacts on them. And I found this one on eBay for about 45 bucks. I'm pretty happy with that price because um, Autofocus. There's one for $54, the XT, XTC, X-Tech kind of thing. This one does not have the, um, 
the little threads on the bottom. Kenko is one that a lot of people use. That runs about 70 or 80 bucks, I think. Ooh, no, 199. Are you kidding me? 200 bucks for the Kenkos is quite expensive. Um, when you've got like Cowboy Studio and some other people doing uh, 70 bucks, here's a Mikey one for uh, $74. So, given that a lot of these were around 70 bucks, I feel like I got a pretty good deal for 40, 45 bucks on this one. So, let's do some macro photography, shall we? So, we're going to start with my, we're going to take this 50 millimeter because it's a 1.4, it gathers lots of light. We're going to need lots of light because these tubes cut down many stops of light when you um, when you use them. So I'll start with the seven millimeter since it's stuck on there permanently. Pop off this guy. I'm going to put on this one. Nice red dot to red dot set up here. So subject matter. Uh, what should we do? Let's do the old coin thing here. I'm gonna zoom in on this coin. I need to prop it up a little bit too though. Do I need to prop it up? And the other thing I was thinking about doing is um, doing all this on a tripod so um, it's nice and sharp. Handheld, uh, you're kind of asking for it. Um, a lot of macro guys go out into nature and kind of monopod it or handhold it and you definitely want the IS lens. You got a thousand dollars laying around. I got some right I got a thousand bucks right down here. Hang on. Um, uh, Hand holding, you're definitely going to want image stabilization, or you're going to end up being. Uh, what I do is I set it on a rapid shutter, and snap, 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 and I go back, kind of lean back and forth for my focusing. I get it on the bugs, and I just start snapping away, and then one out of like 20 of those shots turns out. Snap, snap, snap. Uh, I've got a, a nickel here on the um, table, and I've got the seven millimeter ring uh, extension tube uh, on the back of my 50 millimeter lens. And I don't know if you can see on the screen here, uh, but the focus is really narrow, obviously, because I'm at um, 1.8. You can see that the F is registered as 00, zero because this is not the electronic tube. There's no way of setting the, um, the aperture in here. So um, I've got ISO at 4000. It doesn't probably need to be that high. Let's take it like to 800. Change my shutter speed. Let's change the ISO. Can't put my Q button in that, which is annoying. Let's drop this down to 200. Let's see, live view. All right, so you can kind of see about how far I am. Uh, Putting this on the um, table is takes out of focus, and I can't really focus it um, with this particular lens. So I'm going to have to pick it up and bring it toward you guys a little bit. This is kind of what you have to do in macro sometimes, is uh, move your camera or your subject into the focus frame, because the, the depth of field can be so narrow on this. Come down right in there and take a picture. Not bad. So that's kind of with the um, seven millimeter. So let's turn off the camera and um, get this back up here. Now I'm going to add the 14 millimeter. They'll feel like they tighten a bit more when you go to adjust that. Notice the light's been decreased a little bit. And I'll just lift this up. So that's pretty narrow depth of field. Uh, when you start getting into pretty extreme macro, uh, it's going to be very hard to get all of your subject in focus. So what the bug guys do uh, is something called focus stacking, which allows you basically shoot um, the front of the bug in focus through to the back of the bug in focus, and then you use Photoshop or another program to stitch together all those in focus pictures into something that's, um, that's much more in focus. So this is the seven millimeter and the 14 millimeter. Hmm. Holding this nickel and my thumb's actually out of focus. It's funny. So you're gonna have to take a lot, a lot of pictures to kind of get um, 
what you want in focus. All right, I'm gonna turn this off. I'm going to, um, I think I'll just leave this mounted on here this time and just kind of unscrew this guy right here. Pop on the last one, which is the uh, 24, 28 millimeter. This is probably gonna be hard to do. Thread this on the side like this. But I did it, cause I'm cool. All right, turn the camera back on. You always want to turn your camera off when you're monkeying with lenses. Uh, get the live view going. Wow. We lost a lot of light. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, we just lost a lot of light. Or brighten this up with shutter speed. I could do it with ISO as well. I'm gonna do it with a little ISO. I don't wanna take this like half a year long picture. Drop this up to 800. Nice and bright then. How long is my exposure speed? I think it might be a 15 second exposure, I'd say. No, it's pretty quick. Oh, it's blown out. Yeah, that's too slow a shutter speed, so. Let's darken this up with the shutter. Make that quicker. I'm gonna pump up my ISO a bit more. I'm at 800 now. Let's go up to like 1600. The 5D Mark III can handle it. Yes, it can. Right. All right. How's my histogram? Always check your histogram, kids. So we're a lot closer now. If I had this uh, nickel up on a stand or something, still really bright. Shutter speed still too slow. Lost, lost a lot of light with all this tube. Can't even get this in focus because I can't even really see very well on my screen what's in focus and what isn't. Got to do a bit of experimentation on this, and I've got a bit of blur too. Let's see if I put it up on something. There we go. Now, um, a shutter release would be a really good idea at this time because my pressing down the shutter is bumping the camera a little bit, moving it slightly, which could create a little bit of blur. So, so you want to um, plug in a cable and have a little shutter release that you can hit for uh, to take these kind of pictures when you're doing really close macro. Hopefully I'm not going to bump it too much. Really narrow depth of field boys and girls and I'm moving it a little bit so not the best I not the best setup as I said I should be uh, using a shutter release all right so that's the um, you can see the loss of light though uh, as I said I'm at like 3200 ISO and um, it's really dark on the back of my screen hopefully I'll be able to set the um, the aperture with the tube that has the electronic contacts and that's why I paid more money for that. So let's try that out. So each of these extension tubes have uh, the proper mount on the back of them so you don't have to have a um, combination of the uh, ring that has the mount and the ring that goes into the camera. A little cheap feeling. I'm sure the Canon is uh, nicer quality. Oops, I forgot to turn the camera off, like I told you guys to do. So first we have the 13 millimeter on there first. Raise it up a bit, so it's in focus. It's not far away enough, look at that. Interesting. I should be able to autofocus, um, which it did, very good. And I should be able to uh, go into the queue and change my um, my aperture. And I, in fact, can, very cool. So I can change that to three, two, whatever. Let's come out of the queue, go back to the live view. Should be able to see that uh, adjustment in real time. So now that I can change my f-stop, um, 
I can get a much uh, different setting now. Go down on to, let's stay up at four. Let's check the histogram. Info, info. Always want to be a little underexposed. All right, let's take that info off now. I need a shutter release, but I don't have one. Not bad. Turn the camera off. This guy off. And I could um, try this with the um, the 20 millimeter and the 36 millimeter. Um, maybe I'll try it with just the 36. I'll skip ahead to that one. Hmm, doesn't lock very well. Wow, that doesn't lock. I'm feeling the the bite of the $42 Chinese ripoff a little bit. It doesn't lock on there all the way. There it goes. All right. And I had a little glitch. There's a little something catching in there. The focus, right? Uh, it can't really hold a focus though, because it's a little too close. You can't really rely on macro too or you can't really rely on autofocus too much so i have to do what i did before and raise it up on something well now it's humping i don't want you to focus manual please get the point of this I think so lastly what I'm gonna do combine all of these and see what happens Kind of see the loss of light once I add more tubes. I don't feel like propping this up on something. I think we're all getting the point. Very narrow depth of field, as I said. So this is starting to get very precise. Um, and I meant to grab something when upstairs, and I didn't. I will try to add it to the video though. So you don't want to be hand holding this stuff. You want to be on a tripod. You want a nice base. You want to get everything set up and looking good and then have a trigger um, for your shutter of your camera so that you're not bumping the tripod and such, especially on a cheap tripod. Right. Now, so that made my 50 millimeter lens uh, into a macro lens. Normally I wouldn't have been able to get that close to my subject. So now, uh, these are pretty light and the 50 millimeters pretty light that I have on here. So I don't really need to make use of these other threads, but um, I will in a moment and I'll show you what's up with all that. Hang on. So now we're going to get crazy and we're going to put all three of those tubes on the back of this uh, 100 millimeter macro. And um, this time that's going to be sticking well far out there. And I'm going to want to use one of those threads. You could get uh, one of these um, macro ring tripod rings, which uh, this is a knockoff. I believe the Canon one's like a hundred bucks. I want to say this was 30 or 40. 
I'll post a link to it. This 100 millimeter is a 2.8, so it's not going to let in as much light as the um, the 1.4 uh, 50 mil did. But it should, because it's longer lens, allow me to focus on the um, nickel while it's on the table. I hope. Got it on ISO 3200. This is why a lot of good light right around the end of your um, lens, like basically a ring light or a special um, macro flash attachment is a really good thing. I mean, the only light I've got is some relatively weak Cowboy Studios on either side here. So I don't have a lot of light down on my subject. And that's kind of forcing me to use pretty high um, ISO. So right now I've got all of the, I can tell this is twisting a bit. <laughs> so there's a decent uh, bit of twist in this, even though I tightened it pretty good. Let's tighten it again. So what I'm doing, if you can't tell, is there's two tripod uh, quarter inch threads on the bottom of two of these tubes. So I'm using that to attach this. I thought I'd be able to get a little closer, actually. With these tubes, plus the 100 millimeter macro. Interesting. Still, it's a lot closer than I'm getting with the 50. I'm going to come off the uh, tripod for a minute. This puppy for a second. Just curious to see how close I could get. About the same. So interesting. I thought I'd be really, really super ridiculously close with the extension tubes plus the 100 millimeter macro, but I guess uh, I need bellows. A couple final things about macro that I want to talk about. There is uh, a couple of different uh, ring solutions that you can pick up um, on B&H, Amazon, uh, or Adorama. One of them is basically uh, the ability to reverse the lens onto your camera. If you take a zoom lens or a prime lens, uh, you can pop it off put the special ring on the front and then lock it back onto your camera like that and that gives you uh, macro abilities. And that's what I used to do um, back when I had a film camera, a film SLR. I had a reversal ring like that. That's another cheap way of trying macro that I didn't mention earlier. So, And lastly, I've been reading on the forums and I, I am no expert to macro. I am definitely learning so if I made any mistakes tonight in my video, please forgive. Um, you know, I don't know everything. <gasps> right. So this is a little 58 millimeter to 58 millimeter male to male that I picked up on Anorama. Um, this is a technique that I just read on the um, the board's DP review um, in the macro section that you can reverse a prime on the end of your telephoto or uh, longer prime. So, but here I've got a uh, the 100 millimeter macro and the 50 millimeter um, and basically what I read about this and right now in order to do this you need to have your aperture wide open as I've got in my um, my 50 mil and a, a cheat way of doing that is to or take it all the way to f uh, 1.8 or 1.4 depending on what it, it is and then you hit your depth of field preview uh, which makes sure it opens your uh, aperture all the way wide and then you kind of pop it off your camera. Well, I didn't do that. I just managed to have it set on f1.4 before so it's locked all the way open. And then what you're then doing is you're taking this reversal, you're taking this 58mm uh, to 58mm and both of these happen to be 58. So if the uh, front threads of one is 62 or whatever, uh, then you get the 58 to 62. But both of these lenses happen to be 58. Um, anytime you start messing with filters like this, I, I recommend getting a filter wrench um, because the tightening of two lenses together will add um, enough friction to sort of really lock the, that ring in there. 
and it would be pretty hard to get off if you over tighten this. So try not to over tighten it, just kind of get it relatively on there. You don't have to tighten it really tight because you're never going to get one of them off unless you have a filter wrench. Anyway, so uh, this technique is putting the 100 millimeter uh, on the camera and then reversing the uh, 50 millimeter at the end of it. Now that I've got all this lens, I definitely want to have my, um, my tripod ring. And you need, need a lot of light for macro. Uh, right now I don't have a lot of light, so this is going to be super bright. Maybe I'll come down on it like this. Um, that's definitely why you get a ring light or have your flashes mounted like right there. Uh, you want to have the both lenses uh, focused to infinity. And this should get me pretty good magnification. Now there's definitely a narrow depth of field here. I'm at f2.8. I got my ISO at 2000 right now. Let's pump it up to 4000. Shutter speed is relatively quick right now. Of course you want to be on a tripod with this, but pretty darn nice, I can tell you right now. Very near depth of field. Now let's go completely insane. And I'm gonna put the, uh, I'm gonna try the, the macro rings. Or I'm gonna try the extension tubes now. I know that's pretty nutty, right? Probably gonna lose all kinds of light, but oh, oh boy, look at that puppy. That'll impress the ladies. So um, one of the things you can pick up for macro photography, remember when I said um, you're gonna be such a minute depth of field that um, you might end up needing to move the camera in and out to get focus. And how you do that uh, is one of these macro rail sliders that you can pick up on eBay and on Amazon. I think they're like 20 bucks, 25 bucks, 15 bucks, I don't remember. $13, $23, $30, $89, $100, $200, $300, $400, $500, $600, $700, $800, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000, $1000,
every different area of photography you get into is this whole bunch of um, things to learn about how to do it right. So um, as far as being able to focus all the way up on the face of a bug, uh, I'm probably going to need more than, than my 100 millimeter plus those three extension tubes. So, um, this is Damien for DSLR Nerd. Thank you for watching. Please check out my blog at dslrnerd.com and subscribe to my channel if you'd like. So, thanks for watching and have a great night.